guys, DJ Gunner 258 here again, bringing you a review over the Blackhawk uh, Serpa drop leg holster system. Um, I'm not gonna lie, this has been a kind of uh, hard for th hard thing for me to say. If I can not trip over my words, that'd be nice. Um, but you guys were right. Um, a while ago, I made a uh, video about my WROL or uh, you know what hits the fan or go to war Minuteman, whatever you want to call it um, I did a uh, video over my gear setup and a lot of you saw that I had a chest mounted uh, secondary weapon which is was my uh, Canik TP9SA and you guys were right I was doing that wrong um, and I still stand by what I said with the knowledge I had at the time of that video but ever since coming across this specific holster I have fallen completely in love with it um, now I'm gonna try and do this quickly so I don't uh, bother you with uh, details but this system is a lot better than all other drop leg systems out there um, most of it I am going to attribute to its attaching method it has um, two straps right here that I'm gonna show you right here um, they clip onto your belt this uh, belt didn't come with it, it is uh, purchased oops wrong one it was purchased separately I think it's a UTG belt that I got with this really old UTG cross draw vest anyway any tactical looking or style belt the one that's the ones that are thick will do anyway its main feature that I love is that it uh, draws on two different contact points from the belt and it really spreads the weight out over your uh, uh, waist very very evenly and it makes it feel a lot more comfortable than some other drop leg systems where there's only one strap and it's pulling down and it's gonna get you all messed up. But that is so comfortable, let me tell you guys. The second thing that makes it so comfortable is going to be these straps right here. Um, they're like elasticy and they have grippy material. And I just gotta tell you dude, this is like, it just feels nice, there's no way to describe it, if you haven't tried one on, try it on if you get the opportunity. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. Um, the only downside I see to this thing um, compared to um, other options is because it's generally very pricey. Now, I bought this specific one on Amazon for $40 on sale. If you can, I'm not sure if they're still for sale for that cheap. Um, but if they are, dude, pick one up. Because, I mean, sometimes they used to go for, like, $120 I saw at some places. I'm not sure where that was, but, man, that was expensive. But for $40, and it came with this 1911-style uh, holster. And, by the way, right now I'm rocking a 1911 because I just got back from Colorado. And I had to carry that as opposed to my Canik TP9 because they only allow... Uh, a maximum magazine size of 15 rounds so my Canik TP9 was a no-go so this had to fill in even though I again stand by what I said about 1911s where I don't really think they're suitable go-to-war pistols with the options that are out today anyway go watch that video if you want to check out my opinions on that or you want to yell at me either one uh, so basically it's a great deal for $40 that it comes with not only the rig and the uh, one style Serpa holster. I think there was other options, but I got the one with 1911 because that's the pistol I had. Um, that being said, give me a second. Um, this will also fit the Canik TP9 uh, SA and Canik TP9 Original, uh, as well as I think the version two, I'm not sure, but it will fit these uh, style Canik holsters, the ones with the three pins in the back. That being said, it will not fit the new SF holster, which does not rely on this three pin system. I realized when I made a video a while back um, telling Canik TP9 SA or Canik TP9 owners to rejoice about this strike plate um, and that these also fit on all uh, Serpa style uh, uh, platform rigs, which includes obviously the drop leg holster, that uh, they were interchangeable, but however, with the new SF, that is not the case, and it is not interchangeable with any of the Serpa style uh, uh, platforms. So watch out for that if you have a uh, Canik TP9 SF as opposed to the SA or previous uh, Canik TP9s. Um, tangent over. Anyway, this is a great drop leg system. 
Uh, one of the reasons why I like it as opposed to having it chest mounted um, is it takes the weight off of your shoulders and puts it onto your waist. After I ha put all my uh, ammo, tools, plates, plate carrier, I mean it's a plate carrier, once I put my AR500 plates, that sucker got heavy. And um, it's putting a lot of weight on your shoulders. So anything I can migrate from my shoulders to my waist is well received. I love that. Um, another thing is it's just going to be a lot easier to access when you're prone. I tried accessing my pistol. Um, here, let me fix the focus for you guys. Um, I tried fixing uh, or accessing my pistol while uh, I was prone with the chest rig and it was doable. However, I much prefer, it was a lot easier to get to it when I was on my side. Um, that said, this thing can slop around more when you're doing uh, more radical maneuvers. Um, however, this system in particular does a very good job via the elastic -y, rubbery um, thigh grips and then also, I can't believe I just said thigh grips, thigh straps. Um, and it makes it stay there a lot better than other drop leg systems. If you are going to go with the drop leg system, I definitely say go with this rig. I cannot say enough good things about it. Um, if you get one for $40, snatch it up. I'm going to tell you that. Anyway, if you would like to see any of my other videos, again, I said you can uh, check out why the 1911 sucks, or I'm not sure if that was the title of the video, or some more of my recent videos about AR-15 pistols and whether you should buy one or not. Um, search my channel, or I might put the links in the description. Who knows? Um, anyway, I'll see you guys later. Have a good day.